Hi, my name is Johannes and I'm a Chinese Filipino and I've been living in Shanghai for the past 14 years. And before we begin for today's video, I'd just like to have my coffee. So my friends are coming to visit me and uh, I need to help plan the entire itinerary because I'm the one living here. And I thought it's great to use this as an opportunity to explore and re-explore Shanghai because it's just a massive city, it's always changing and there's still a lot of places and things that have not done yet. So why not make a um, vlog out of it? And also it'll be interesting because I'm not really a tourist and uh, I think I see myself more as a local. So it'll be nice to see the city in a different light and in a different perspective. So when planning for my friend's trip, I'm looking for three things actually. One is to look for a nice destination wherein we can just have a nice leisurely walk. Number two is to look for cafes or restaurants or bars with a view. And number three, and I think the most important thing is to look for the best spot for a great photo. And obviously I'm not going to bring them to a typical tourist trap because I should know better. I actually live close by and today I'm going to explore first People's Square and walk all the way to the Bund, which is the famous waterfront of Shanghai. The one behind me is the Shine Museum, but we're not going in because I just came to look at the uh, waterworks, but I'm going to another museum. I'm also going to give my comment whether a destination is something that it's worth going to or might as well just skip it. This is the Shanghai History Museum and I always walk past this building every day for two years but for some reason I've never been inside so today I'm actually quite excited that I'm going in um, finally so let's go So I read about the museum prior to coming here and apparently it is a museum dedicated to the, as the name goes, it's the history of Shanghai. From its early days as a port city to its growth as a cultural to industrial hub and the two bus lines in front of the main hall when you enter. It used to be at the previous HSBC building at the pond and it is expected to see a lot of artifacts that dates back all the way to 6,000 years. And then the museum's collection focuses on the 100 years between 1843 to 1949, with exhibits that showcase the city's art, culture, as well as the industrialization. So I think whether, whether my friends is going to be keen to know more about history or even just a little bit of curiosity about the Shanghai's past, I think this would be a great option to just walk around and, and, and just enjoy the, uh, the museum.
after two years of living just a block away from this site, I managed to come into the Shanghai History Museum and I just love the architect, it's just beautiful. And it's good to spend maybe like an hour or two inside because it's quite massive. There are four levels and one is the, uh, the, the fifth floor is actually a rooftop and it's just a great different perspective of where I live. And uh, there's a lot of rich history about Shanghai that I did not know of. And the best thing is that it's for free. So just right next to the museum is actually a park. And the one behind me is a restaurant called Ministry of Crab. And it's really good. It's beautiful in the evening. And it's on the pricier side though, so um, but if it's like on a special occasion, it's not so bad once in a while. Um, but if you're not into dating, I'm going to show you there's actually a marriage market, which I'll show shortly. So just right in front of me is the uh, marriage market. So you see a lot of the aunties and uncles and in front of them, they will lay out their children's <laughs> profile. This only happens every weekend and parents, grandparents gather here to try to find suitable partners for their unmarried children and grandchildren. So they'll advertise the children's attributes like age, occupation, education, as well as height and weight. Likewise, they also list their requirements for potential partners such as age, height, education, as well as income. Right. So, the only thing about this part that I don't like personally is that it's not exactly dog friendly so I always walk past around it but never inside but otherwise it's not so bad I think it's quite interesting and I think it will be better to come here during spring or autumn when it's not so warm because today it's just really really humid So there you go, I think I already walked around the entire People's Square. So People's Square is quite interesting because it used to be a horse racetrack until it became illegal to gamble in China and that was after the World War II. And the Shanghai History Museum, it's interesting because that used to be, that specific building used to be the clubhouse of the Shanghai Race Club. And it's just nice to, to see that they were able to preserve the interior and the facade uh, it's still quite impeccable and quite impressive i must say um, and then i just passed by the row of um, art deco buildings and park hotel apparently it used to be the tallest building in asia as well as in china a long time ago um, i think that was 90 years ago um, and uh, yeah so my friends are staying there actually so it's going to be quite interesting to see the interior when they come over and um, the only thing that I don't like about the entire walk would be the park itself. Uh, I feel it's quite small and there's nothing really much to see apart from the marriage market. Um, unless you're into those. But for me, I feel like uh, 
there's not much to, to see there. But anyway, um, this is a great starting point to see Shanghai and then walk all the way to the Bond area, which I'll be doing right now. It depends. It's still quite warm, so I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can just walk or maybe cycle all the way to, to the bar. It's about 1.5 kilometers to walk from here and all the way to the Bond area. And I think it's going to be quite a bit of a walk right now because I'm exhausted, it's really warm and humid. And uh, I can maybe choose to take a train, the little train that you see in front of me. Or not. Um, I think I'll just try to move away from this street because I think it's better in the evening anyway uh, now there's not much to see um, better if it's in the evening because you see all the neon lights but otherwise it's just so busy so I'll take a detour and just look for a bicycle while I was trying to look for a place with a nice view of the bond I noticed that most of the venues that I used to go to have shop and like what I mentioned earlier in this video that Shanghai is just ever changing, ever evolving so we just need to try to keep up with its pace So I found out about this building online and I'm not so sure if it's new if the building is here or not, but for sure it's my first time coming here and uh, it's quite popular amongst a lot of influencers and I'm trying to go to the, uh, the rooftop bar but it's still shot because I'm early so I'm here on the ground floor, it's a cafe and I'll just chill for a little bit and I'll go upstairs later on While I wait for the sunset and for all the buildings to light up, I managed to speak to one of the staff and found out that this place is rather new and they just opened a year ago. I must say the view is very unique and stunning and very European and I guess that's the reason why a lot of people will come here to take photos. Maybe I'm old, but I don't really mind being in a bar and drinking on my own. What I do mind, however, is the price. And this espresso martini is about 78 RMB or 10 US dollar. And that is already the cheapest on their list. I suppose that's what you pay to get this kind of view at the Bund. Behind me is the iconic Pudong skyline and this is actually my first time walking on this bridge and it's a great highlight for this entire day and it's much better to be on this side called Pushi which you'll find out shortly as to why.
here you can see a lot of the historic buildings that showcase a variety of architectural styles, including Gothic, Baroque, Art Deco to Renaissance and Neoclassical. These buildings were built in the early 20th century and served as the headquarters for banks, trading houses, and other businesses. Today, these buildings have been restored and repurposed into restaurants, bars, and luxury hotels, making the Bon a popular destination for both locals and tourists. Although, I must say, I can't wait to go to the next destination because I really want to escape the crowd. It's just overwhelming, especially in this heat. This is the addition hotel and it has a unique view of the barn and this can potentially be the best way to end a long day of walking. Just take note that the cocktail here is even more expensive. Like I ordered a vodka soda and it cost me about 180 RMB or that's about 25 US dollar. To summarize this evening, I enjoyed most of it except for the busy Nanjing road because there's just a lot of people but maybe it'll be a bit different if the weather was slightly cooler. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know if I missed anything or any suggestions as to where to go next. Please feel free to write on the comment below.